Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Vintage Story. Today I'm going to be teaching you all about clay forming and pit kilns. So where to begin? This. The dirt. It's not actually dirt. It's blue clay in soil. And we're actually looking for this stuff specifically for most of the things that I'm going to be discussing in this episode. You might also have a good option for fire clay as well, but it can be used for a lot more things and therefore could be a bit more valuable to you. So you may end up wanting to save that for those special projects. But nonetheless, when you find some clay, you're going to want to dig it, probably with your hands or a shovel. Either one will work, just a shovel is going to be a bit quicker. So what to do with it then? You take your clay and you sit down and you have yourself a nap. Uh, okay, well, maybe not. You're going to start clay forming. That's where you press sneak and right click with some clay in your hand. If you don't have enough, you won't be able to complete whatever project you start, but you might be able to get part way through and come back to it later. Just make sure that wherever you start your project is an acceptable spot for you. That being said, you've got a plethora of different options to choose from. This being blue clay, you're going to have this list here. Now, you'll notice that there are a couple different options. There's a single, or you can make four at a time. You can make some now and a bunch later if you don't have the materials to make the quantities that you're looking for uh, in the future. So a lot of these will have this option. That's because some of these can be placed in quadrants. We'll get into that as we've started making some of these things. But for now, I'm going to choose four raw bowls. And before I start making those, let's actually take some of this fire clay that I've also got and I will sneak right click here and you'll notice that some of the options have changed in this case. I now also have a clay oven as well and some raw fire clay shingles. In the other one there were some blue clay shingles. There are just going to be shingles that you can use for making different shingle or roofing blocks, but they're just two different colors. And I'm only going to make a single cooking pot. These are the two things that I recommend that you start off with when you're first doing some clay forming. There may be a few others as well, but these ones usually serve me quite nicely. Now, you can just start right-clicking to place things in individual pixels. You'll notice that there's like a little green outline. Uh, you can also hold Alt as before, like when napping, to start removing things by pressing left click. But if you want to make things a little bit faster, you can press the F key by default and you can choose your palette size so that you can add or remove a single pixel, four pixels, or nine pixels at a time. And then there's also a copy paste option, but you have to have a layer completed before you can even do that. But you'll notice here that I've just finished a layer and it popped up to the next one. If I go to the 3x3, I could continue on or singles or doubles. Instead, I'm going to duplicate the layer that we had before. And I just hold down right click and it'll automatically place things. And you can see as I'm doing this at the top there, it says the available voxels per pieces that I'm actually adding in. Then I can go to the 3x3 and I can remove a 3x3 chunk at a time. And we now have four raw bowls. I can put them down individually or in quadrants just by sneak placing them. Then I can always just pick them up with a right click. Some of the raw items may end up needing to be broken to be picked up, but don't worry, they won't break unless you haven't finished your project, in which case you, you might want to finish your project first. Now finishing something like this clay bowl over here, I'm going to duplicate the layer and you can see that it just kind of speed th speeds things up considerably, so I'm just holding right click. Oops, I went a little too far. Not to worry, I can just remove stuff from that layer and then I can add in individually things to complete this last layer of the bowl. And there we have it, one raw cooking pot. Between those bowls and this cooking pot you can get light sources as well as much better food levels and you're going to want to actually cook these in a pit kiln. Now pit kilns basically are a pit in the ground that you cook in. That, that's pretty much it. You're, you're going to be cooking these items. So you put down this, you take some of these, and you can put them in there just by sneak placing. What you're going to need is a bunch of dry grass, which you can harvest from just any of the regular grass around with a knife or scythe. Then you sneak and place the, the grass into, until you can't place any more. I'm trying to place more and it won't let me. Then you know that your pit kiln has started. You can even see at the top there, it'll actually say uh, pit kiln just up above there. The next layer needs to be sticks. You'll need to put a couple layers on top of that. You can still try to put more on there, but it just won't work. Then to finish it off, it actually makes a big difference what you put for this final step. Now most often you're going to have access to, well, wood. Well, you, you can find trees pretty easily, you just chop them down, you turn them into firewood, and you can put those 
on top and just by placing them like that. And this is a pit kiln. You then could light that and you have to wait a certain amount of time and then everything will be fired and ready. Yeah, you might have some leftovers. You'll have to make another pit kiln, but you will want to have solid blocks on all four sides around it as well as the side under it. On top of that, you're going to want to make sure that you've got some some uh, rain protection. If you put a block directly on top, you've smothered it. So you're going to want to put the block at least one space above it. It needs to have exposure to the air, but it needs to not have exposure to the sky. If it starts raining, it could easily put your pit kiln out. And most importantly, you don't want it near any flammable sources, whether it be grass or trees your own storage or bed or house, you're, you're not going to want it near those things. So you're going to want to put it out so that there's no burnables within a couple blocks of it that you actually really care about. But if you change your mind on this or you say, oh, you know what? Oh, I forgot to put this in here. I wanted that one instead of the, uh, the, the pot because I already have a cooking pot or something. You can just break it with your bare hands and it will just knock everything down into a broken up part. Then you can pick all those up again. There we go. And in this case, I'm going to put down the sticks. And instead of the wood, I'm going to put down some peat because you might also just find some of that around in the world. And this will be the same because in either case, you're going to need to take uh, a torch to it and light it. And then it will start your pit kiln. And if you change your mind again, you break it, you might end up losing stuff. Look, see, the, the fire is already spreading. So you're going to want to be very cautious about what you have near it. That, yep, there goes the firewood. Oh man, this, this is a mess. So let's talk about the different types of pit kiln fuels that we have access to. You may find some others available to you as well. But as I was saying, the most common is going to be firewood and peat. You may also find brown coal, black coal, charcoal, or coke. Okay, you might not find all those things, but you can use them for making different pit kilns. And in each case, they're going to have a varying amount of how long it will take for them to actually smelt. In the case of firewood, it'll be about 40 hours. Peat is going to be maybe a day and a half with 32 hours. Brown coal, if you're able to smelt it or find some nuggets on the surface, or maybe even in some loot around the world, it'll be just a little bit more than a day. And then of course, black coal is going to be, um, yeah, um, one day exactly again you can find it similar to brown coal and charcoal you can make yourself and that's actually the fastest along with coke and that's going to be 20 hours but charcoal does take a little bit of doing so considering that you may want to use some charcoal let's take a brief aside and actually discuss how you can make some first you're going to need a whole lot of firewood the more firewood you have the better off you're going to be the more charcoal you'll get in return or at least that's what it's been in my experience you're going to need a little bit of building materials or a place that you can also dig out. In this case, I just dug down one square and I will plan on making an area. Now you're going to want to fill it up as well. So I'm in creative. I have a lot of infinite materials. Let's just fill this up quite a bit. Oop, that's a little too much. And I'm going to fill this up as well. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a two by two by two space. Now you can create a different size area that you want all the way up to like 11 by 11 by 11. Uh, it, it doesn't even have to be very big at all, but uh, the maximum is 11 square cube. And you'll need to enclose it entirely with solid blocks. In this case, dirt works just fine. Don't use things like straw or leaves or whatever you, you or anything like that. Stones work fine. Gravel is going to be a porous material. You don't want to use that. But if you put a bit of dirt on top as well, that should seal it off. But you are going to need to have access to at least one space. Now in this case, I'm going to actually do this where I create kind of an alcove for me to access it. Then I'm going to want to create a little fire pit on top add a little bit more fuel for it to start burning. And you can see at the top there it says charcoal pit unlit. So if I light it up, it now says it has a certain in-game minutes before the pile ignites. Make sure it's not exposed to air. So this is your cue to seal it up. Now if you want, you can also put some on the corners, but those are not really required. And you'll know that it's working when you see the, uh, the, the smoke basically going up here. If you are not sure, like you're not seeing the smoke up there and it's been a little bit, then you're definitely going to want to, well, 
dig your wood back out or else it might just turn into ash and you'll lose it all. So keep that in mind. But that, that's pretty much how you end up making charcoal. And here we have it. It's been a couple days. Temporal storm has come and gone. And if you open it up, you should have access to charcoal. By taking a shovel to it, I found that to be the most useful tool for getting this out quicker. You can then dig it up and get yourself all the charcoal that you have available to you from the wood pile. Now your results may vary, but from my four stacks on one layer and four stacks on the second layer, thus being eight stacks of firewood, I get 37 charcoal from it. So keep in mind that you're going to only get a minor return, but that's the basic idea. And yes, you can make them really big or really small. And you can see the different types down below here. There isn't too much of a difference on them. You just need a few pieces for the top layer. And some of them, like I said, may look a little overstuffed. Another clay forming item that you might want to consider, and actually specifically what I'm looking to talk about here, is going to be this, a storage vessel. This will have a lot more storage than your usual reed baskets. And it's pretty darn good if you look at the very top there, for storing different kinds of foods, specifically vegetables, grains, or maybe even other if it's uh, put downstairs in a cellar-like atmosphere. With grass and some sticks, and you'll notice that in this case I've actually, it looks like it's already run out of space. Well, not to worry. You can grab a few extra pieces here, and you can see that it stuffs around the edges and then puts a little bit more over the top. So it might take a little bit more for that to actually cook fuel-wise, but otherwise it's still going to be the, the same and you can light it just the same as the others. So next we've got the watering can. This can be useful if you're in a very wet area or something like that where it nearly always rains or something. This might not be useful whatsoever. If you're in a desert or a dry area, then yes, this is going to be something you're going to need. Um, as far as wanting, well, if you take one of these, once they've been uh, cooked up, you can obviously just go over to a water source, right click, and it's full. Then you can use it to just pour water onto your crops, uh, tilled fields, and so on. You can even hold alt, and it will pour water wherever your mouse pointer is. But also, if you are using some kind of writable item like chalk or something like that on stone, then you can take your watering can and you can just wash off those different uh, icons. Now the next item that we have that isn't needed but perhaps wanted would be different kinds of shingles. Now in this case I've got some raw fire clay shingles and some raw blue clay shingles. Again they're just going to be uh, kind of clay formed on the ground as before and you'll want to just pit kiln them and you get several of them. But there's something that you should be aware of in this case. You can see that I've got a couple stacks here. I can still try to do the uh, the pit kiln. You can't put them next to each other. You'd have you should uh, checkerboard them instead of having them right next to each other because if they have an open block exposed, bad things will happen. Uh, you you might lose stuff. So in this case, even though I have it set up like this and I try this, it will say can only fire up to 48 at once. So I will actually need to remove a bunch of these because I need to have enough space for the materials in order to fire it. Same thing with clay bricks, whether they be uh, blue clay or if they are fire clay, uh, like this is the before and then you've got the after up here. And you can use those to craft all sorts of different roofing and tile blocks. Then for more aesthetics, you've got planters and flower pots, which are used for well, just decoration really. You can buy more aesthetically pleasing ones from the different merchants and traders in the world, but the ones that you can make uh, as part of the base game are fairly plain, but very functional. And just for reference sake, this is a single corn flower in both of these containers. So they kind of expand to fill the container as you'd like it. And they are slightly rotatable, so you don't have to have them all just like perfectly square. Then we get into more of the metal smithing type stuff where we've got crucibles. This uh, can be placed in a quadrant area or single placed in the middle, but it is used once smelted to uh, basically be used in a fire pit. So if I put one in here, it opens up and you can start putting metals in there to smelt, to pour them in a mold. To go along with that, we've got raw ingot molds, which uh, if you hadn't already pieced it together, you can pour from a crucible that has molten metal into the ingot molds, as well as different tool and weapon molds like pickaxes and hammer molds and so on. Not all things have molds, but your 
early game stuff definitely does. And once they've completed, they'll look a little bit more baked. And if you have the proper tools to make it later on, you can also make a rack to store these extra molds in. And then last but not least, if you want to get absolutely crazy, you can make an anvil mold, which requires nine ingots of a given metal. And it's just going to be a chonk to actually make it, whether it be the metal for it or the clay involved. And to finish things off, I'm going to show you everything there is about metallurgy. Okay, well, maybe in a future episode. This one's run a little bit long. Food is very big, very important, and takes a bit of managing in order to get it right. But just know that if you are interested in checking out bees, food storage, metals, plenty of other things that I may have covered already, or I'm yet to, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and come back for more. Till next time, folks. I'll see ya.